So this customer had a net CDF data. Um, again, I'm guessing this is also from NOAA, um, with uh, bands, multiple different bands, one for the magnitude of winds, and I think this is across the world, magnitude of wind, and another uh, raster, another band of the raster for the direction of the wind. So it's kind of, if you think about this, this is kind of a polar to Cartesian coordinates scenario, if you remember any of your high school math. Um, so they want to go from this magnitude and direction to uh, two rasters with the magnitude in the x direction and magnitude in the y direction. Um, and there's a basic formula for this. You're multiplying the magnitude um, times the, the cosine of, of the angle converted to radians. Um, and the other one, you're taking the sine for, for the other direction. So uh, we're just going to do this in that raster expression evaluator. So here it allows you to take two different bands of the same raster um, and, and do uh, some mathematical operations. As we can see, there's a whole list of mathematical operations yeah. available. Um, it's the same expression evaluator you get in your attribute creator. And you can do all this on your raster. Um, and then in this scenario, they actually wanted to take the raster values and go to points, yes. or actually put this in a table in a database. So we're actually going to blow out every, um, every cell of the raster to its own point or its own row in a table. Um, and a handy thing there is to use the attribute keeper, like Dale mentioned. Uh, I think he mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. This will keep our output. Actually, when you go from raster to, to points, you're creating a lot of data. It's mm -hmm. using a lot of memory. It's always nice to clean up before that. Any attributes you don't care about or don't need, get rid of them, um, and, you'll, and you'll save a lot of memory, and uh, things will always run smoother. So always recommend doing that. Uh, then we're coercing, we're turning raster into individual points. I think that's what we saw in the data inspector. We've got a lot of points now. Then we want to go one step further and take those points and just turn them into attributes. And right. the transformer <laughs> for that is the coordinate, I believe it's a coordinate value extractor. Is that it? Coordinate extractor. Coordinate yeah. extractor. Um, so that'll just get uh, everything into attribute values. And right. then you could write this out to whatever uh, database or And I think along one. the way you must have exposed the band zero value. Like you, you would have done this and said, ah, yes, oh, let I me did. see, because, <clears throat> because the raster cell coercer gives you a list of values. Yeah. But if you want to get at individual ones, you've got to get them exposed. So you'd have gone right click and said expose, yes. and you'd have said two uh, elements, and then um, you'd have seen what you wanted there. Yep. So that's that's exactly how I did that. And then here we go. So uh, let's turn this off and let's see. This one are the points. That's our points, which don't look all that interesting. Um, here they are down yeah. in our nice table. This is this is actually what they want to write out to the database. This, this is what we thought that the customer would want yeah. here. Um, but because it's more fun. That's the that's what the wind uh, the wind magnitude looked like in the x direction. It looks like I wouldn't want to be like flying. Wind. Yeah. I wouldn't want to fly <laughs> through there. I don't. Mark Ireland, would you fly through there in an airplane? Probably not. I go through in a train, but um, <laughs> yes. not a plane. in a train he might, but not in a plane. Okay, so that's the key thing there. And again, expression evaluating and then blowing it out into um, into points. Into points.